Now we want to get some more analysis and let me bring in our guest, Mr. Mayor Javid Denfar, a Middle East Affairs Analyst. And he's live for us from Tel Aviv. Great to have you with us on our program, Mr. Jav Denfar. Um, so July 1st, which is two days from now, is when Israel is set to move ahead with annexation plans in the occupied West Bank. Uh, and this is happening in line with U.S. President Donald Trump's so-called Middle East plan. Why do you think there's a rush to do so? Well, um, first and foremost, the Israeli government sees the backing of uh, President Tr Tr Trump as the most important factor. They want to make sure that this happens while President Trump is in, uh, is in office. Uh, you know, politics always change. We see how President Trump is under tremendous pressure uh, in the United States because of his handling uh, of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, if you look at the polls, he's doing very badly, especially because of, not just because of the demonstrations of Black Lives Matter, but also how he's handled the uh, the COVID-19 crisis on the Israeli side, they Israel current Israeli government sees the the arrival of President Trump at the White House as a, a historic opportunity. No U.S. president has ever backed uh, Israel policies in the West Bank and in Jerusalem. Uh, it is something close to a miracle, Wang Mang Mang, the way they, the, the 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 current government supporters see President Trump's ascendancy to the White House. They see it as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's basically now or never. Therefore, we must go and uh, annex as much of, as much as, uh, of, of uh, West Bank as we can. This is their view. Whether they will be able to do it by July the 1st, there are many uh, open question marks uh, regarding that at the moment. Yeah, and the international community, as we heard, has opposed the annexation, uh, which could bring an end to the two-state solution and also lead to EU sanctions and perhaps an end to Netanyahu's coalition deal with Ghent. Um, putting those politics aside, Mr. Jeb Denfar, what do you think these potential consequences could mean for the Palestinians? Uh, look, uh, in terms of uh, for the Palestinians, it means weakening of the PLO. You know, uh, we in Israel are supposed to be strengthening the hand of those who want to, uh, li to want, who want to live with us in peace. The PLO, I've got problems with some of PLO's policies. Don't get me wrong, but they are the they are you know overall they are the best uh, partners for peace. And and I think the only thing that President Abbas can count on uh, to stop the annexation is uh, whether Prime Minister Gantz, uh, well, uh, co-Prime Minister, because in Israel, as you know, we're going to have, we have two Prime Ministers, one who's serving now and one's going to serve in about a year and three months. Uh, his best hope, President Abbas, is number one, President Gantz, Mr. Gantz says, I'm not going to back annexation, or Mr. Gantz says, I'm only going to back annexation in areas that are almost exclusively Israeli, which are some settlements around Jerusalem. That's his best hope. His second best hope and, uh, is Mr. Trump saying no to the annexation. But again, uh, that's why I'm putting it in second, even though Mr. Trump is more powerful on the annexation question than Gantz. The, why I'm not very optimistic about Trump doing it is because Trump's, uh, the 25% of Americans are evangelicals. They believe in the Holy Land. They believe in the annexation. So for his own sake, for re-election in November, I don't think Trump is going to back down. Uh, so the only hope the Palestinians have now is, is whether Gantz withdraws his support for, uh, from uh, annexation. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the